Hi there, and welcome back to Basic Math for Economics. In this video, we're going to talk about some more complicated rules that we use to calculate, I guess, some more complicated derivatives. So anyways, in this video, we're going to go over what we call the product and the chain rules. So anyways, there are going to be times in economics when calculating the derivative of a function, it's just really tough, it's cumbersome, and we don't really want to just use the power rule. In fact, there's going to be much faster ways to do it than using the power rule. Um, I mean, it could be a situation where two functions are multiplied by another. Yeah, sure, we could distribute everything out, put everything nicely, um, but it may not be optimal to do that. Or it could be a situation where we have a function within a function. So, I mean, the time we're going to save by learning some alternative techniques is going to make it much more efficient in solving these problems. Again, you can do these brute force, it's possible, but I don't recommend it personally. I think these rules are actually much more simple. So I'm going to classify these techniques into two main types for economics. Um, as a note, there are other types, but they're rarely used in economics. Um, they're, they're worth reviewing, but they're not worth going over right now, just because we're, you're rarely ever going to see them. These are the two that are most commonly used. But anyways, depending on how these functions are organized, we're going to classify them as the product rule and the chain rule. So jumping right in, let's talk about the product rule. It's going to be useful in situations where we have two functions that are multiplied by each other. So anyways, if we have two functions of x, g of x and h of x, I can define a function f of x as just them multiplied by each other. It's g of x times h of x. And I can actually calculate the derivative of that function. So the product rule is going to give me a quick way to calculate the derivative of f of x. And we define it as f prime of x equals g prime of x times h of x plus g of x times h prime of x. Now, that might seem a little crazy, but putting this all into words, it's just the derivative of the first function times the second function plus the derivative of the second function times the first function. I've got it reversed right there, but just remember, it's the derivative of each individual function times the other function. You just keep adding them together until you figure them all out. That's all that goes into doing the product rule. So, as before, let's practice this rule, and we're going to practice it by calculating a marginal revenue function to go with that marginal cost function we calculated last time. So let's suppose that a monopolist faced the inverse demand function of price equals 100 minus 2 times their quantity, or 100 minus 2q. So we can figure out the monopolist's total revenue by multiplying the price they charge and the quantity they sell, or price times quantity. That's a general uh, way of defining total revenue. Now remember that we can go uh, from our total revenue to our marginal revenue just by taking a derivative. But before we do that, we can actually simplify our total revenue. We can make this function solely a price of quantity by substituting the inverse demand function in for the price. So I'm going to take that p in p times q and replace it with the inverse demand function of 100 minus 2q. So I get a total revenue function equal to 100 minus 2q in parentheses times q itself. So anyways, yes, I could easily solve this by distributing q through the parentheses then using the power rule, but I want to show you guys how to solve this using the product rule, because not all of them are going to be this easy to be honest. So anyways, I have two functions multiplied by each other in this case. So I have g of q, which is 100 minus 2q, and I have h of q, which is q. Those are my two functions, I just separate them out. Now, both these functions actually have very easily to calculate derivatives that I can get from using the power rule. And I'm not going to go into the details of the power rule right now. We've already covered that. But I would obtain g prime of q is equal to negative q, and h prime of q is equal to 1. So if you want a review of how to use the power rule to get those derivatives, feel free to watch the previous video. But anyways, from there I have everything I need to calculate my derivative using the product rule. So my marginal revenue in this case, which is equal to f prime of q, again, it's just g prime of q times h of q, which is negative 2 for g prime of q, h of q is just equal to q, plus g of q times h prime of q. g of q is just the 100 minus 2q, and h prime of q is just equal to 1. So plugging them all into, in there together, and then rearranging terms a little bit, I get that my marginal revenue is equal to negative 2q plus 100 minus 2q, or 100 minus 4q. And that's it. That's all we have to do to calculate our marginal revenue function. So anyways, we have one other technique to cover, and that's called the chain rule. 
So the chain rule is going to be really useful when we're dealing with functions of functions, which is more common than you might think. There are several utility types, which is a function within a function. So anyways, let's go back to that g of x and h of x again. If f of x is just g of h of x, so basically whatever h of x does to x becomes the argument for g of x. It's a function of a function. We can actually calculate the derivative of f of x as f prime of x equals g prime of h of x times h prime of x. So it's the derivative of our outer function, which is g of x in this case, where our inner function is going to still acting as the argument for the outer function, times the derivative of the inner function. I like to say this is kind of like peeling an onion argument. You have to start uh, working it down until you get to the inner argument, until you get to x by itself. That is how you use the chain rule. So anyways, let's again look at this through another utility function. So u of x in this case is equal to the log of x squared. And I want to calculate the marginal utility u prime of x. Okay, so in this case, my first function, g of x, is just log of x. So we're taking the log of a function. And my inner function, h of x, is equal to x squared. So like, like before, h of x is serving as the argument of g of x, but it's also a function of x on its own. So anyways, like before, using my logarithm rule and my uh, ch uh, power rule, I can calculate the derivatives of both these expressions. I get g prime of x equals 1 over x, and h prime of x equals 2x. And from there, I just apply what I know about the chain rule. So u prime of x is equal to g prime h of x times h prime of x, or 1 over h of x times 2x, substituting everything in so far. And actually, I can do one more substitution for this. I know what h of x is. That's just going to be x squared in this case. So u prime of x is equal to 2x divided by x squared, and I can cancel an x out of both the numerator and the denominator, and I obtain 2 over x. So this is going to be really useful in situations where you need to have a function of a function. Honestly, using the logarithm is really easy because you could also just use the logarithm definition and solve this one. But the chain rule is a very powerful tool. So other, another important tool that we use in e economics very rarely is the quotient rule. And interestingly enough, the quotient rule is entirely derived just from the product rule and the chain rule put together, which is why we're not really going to cover it here. And plus, it's used very rarely. Anyways, that's actually all for this video. Thanks for watching.